It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Mac, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. Host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight. A nice, cool Michigan evening here. Finally, the temperatures have broke. We've got a little rain. And I got Dan DeFall sitting here by my side. That's right, folks. And if you're listening on the podcast, I'm telling you what, you got to go over and watch the live Facebook feed because there's things you won't hear on here that you would see that happens on the live show. There you go. But, anyways, I tell you what, this weather is being awesome. I think my grass actually has a tinge of green to it. Mine does. I actually mowed today. Did you? Yes, front was, and back. I was thinking about doing it tomorrow. I'm like, eh, we'll see. Second time I've mowed the <laughs> front yard this month. <laughs> right? Dan Carr is in the cabin. Dan, what is going on? It's been a long time. We need to talk. Maybe after the show. <laughs> right? Uh, so. But yeah, you know, it, it's been one of those things. The weather has broken, but I, I get a feeling it's going to get a little warm again. Well, we've got one of our supporters that's actually uh, just posted or uh popped into the cabin so we need to get busy and get our supporters uh name out there absolutely so let's, why don't we do that go right ahead all right tell you what folks it's the getting it's we're just a couple months away from october and well early season in september uh get on over to buckbaits.com if you're in southeast michigan and you're in sterling heights and you go over to the brick and mortar deer camp store at 15 and dodge park they carry obviously buck baits in there but if you want 20 percent off your order get over to buckbaits.com use the promo code unj20 uh, I used the easy cuts yesterday. Actually, I was using the extension saw. Um, you used mine last uh, a week and a half ago. There you go. And I tell you what, we got a great little deal with uh, easy cut. If you want 15% off your order, use the promo code UNJ15OFF at easycutproducts.com and go over there and get yourself some great tools. The man, the myth, the legend they call Lincoln Roan, who is our special guest tonight. And we've got our code with him unj25 gets you 25 dollars off your order at packermax.com and if you are interested in a three-point system do you have that picture i do if you give me one second I will he's running it. a special to the end of the month he's got go. a three-point uh packer max you can get 75 dollars off the pmk 43 hd PMX 43. Is that what it's? Okay, good. Thank you for the correction. You need some coffee. Well, no. I just like to way over there. But uh, get on over there if you want a three-point Packer Max. Uh, can't say enough about the Island Armory. Always getting new stuff in. Um, they like guns. You got to admit. Um, Who doesn't like guns? Right? You want... Speaking of, Natalie just popped into the cabin. There she is. And if you want 10% off your order, UNJ10 over at theislandarmory.com. Go over there, check their website weekly because she's always adding new stuff. They're always getting in the store. And it doesn't stay long once she gets it in. Uh, September 1st in Michigan, goose calls, goose season. Get over to jpogamecalls.com. Check out uh, UNJ10 for 10% off your order over there. Uh, we're drinking, we switched over to cold brew and over at Deer Camp Coffee. You can get 10% off your order, UNJ10, and get yourself some coffee. And don't forget to get the UNJ blend itself, a perfect medium roast for everybody to enjoy. It's courtesy of the label 8UNJ. There you go. And if you switch over to my screen, uh, let me make a quick check. Yep, the other camera's missing, but it's 72 degrees in St. Ignace, Michigan, where we're taking a look at the famous Mackinac Bridge. There you go. And thanks to M123FM up in Newberry. They carry our show, and you can also find Deer Camp Coffee at Cedars, where you can also get a pizza up there as well. And we hear the pizza's awesome. That's what I hear. I hear it's pretty good up there. Right? So, there you go. Got everybody taken care of? I think we do. So, uh, before Danny, before we get our, our guest in here, I want to I set the tone for tonight's show. I think you need to. I've got a special video that uh, was sent to me, and I think we ought to play it and just kind of get everybody in the mood for what we're going to talk about tonight. And this might also give you some ideas in case you want to save a little money on gas with these high prices nowadays. So none other than the Packer Max, and now we have Lincoln Roan. Lincoln, did you get a chance to see what we just had up? 
<laughs> yes, I did. That's that's awesome. I tell you what, with high gas prices the way they are, if you're drink, you know, if your your vehicle drinks regular or drinks diesel, I'm I'm thinking we've kind of got it for you there. Yeah, that's the ticket right there. Well, it shows you just how easy it is to use the Packer Max. I mean, right. it's so easy you can get a bike and and pedal it out there. Yep. And, you know and. You actually told us that you were at a show here this this past week, and that you know they're 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 pushing the these electric vehicles nowadays. But they had an electric bike there, and you said they hooked that up to the Packer Max as well. Yep, the e bike, and uh, I think it was a I don't even know what brand it was. I think it was a Ramble, and they uh, yeah we we hooked it up and and uh, drug it all over the place. So it was worked out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, it, it's just one of those things. Um, I bet you caused quite a stir by doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The promoter wasn't super happy with us, but whatever. <laughs> so, sounds like you, you like to get into just a little bit of trouble every now and then. We know you, we, we, we know you too well. <laughs> My mother would definitely agree with you on that. <laughs> Maybe we need to have her on the show one night and get the real story sure. behind yeah. Lincoln Road. Can we do right. that? That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she could tell some stories. Oh, That, that was not a great kid <laughs> how the heck are you man what have you been up to doing great man doing great um been up to, i mean it's, we've been we've been busy as ever and you know obviously this is our our busy season and uh just man. came off a trip out east and uh went to upper state new york and one of my big dealers out there um they have three locations and they do food plot events at each at each location and so we did Upper State New York on Wednesday last week, and then Thursday we did uh, in uh, Detroit, Maine, and then Friday we came back into Vermont, and then spent 14 hours on the road Saturday driving home, and I was uh, just about home and drove into a massive thunderstorm and got to pull over for a half hour so I could see. You probably so, needed the rest, actually. I did. That's I was, a whirlwind. I was wrecked. I'm still. I'm still. If I'm a little. If I'm a little uh, subdued tonight, that's why I'm tired still. I'm, the older I get, the more it takes it out of me. He said subdued. Him subdued. Lincoln Rome uh, subdued. I, 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 I'm not buying it. No way. Right. Give, him, give him a little bit, and he'll get, he'll get fired right back up. It'll be some some woke keyword will we'll hit, right. and he'll be throwing the hat at the screen. Some of the coffee right now is deer camp land right here. There you, there go. you go. You know, and, and you know, we wanted to have you on. Last week we talked with Robbie over at Antler King. Uh, obviously, like you said, this is your busy time of year, and we're getting into the food plot, uh, food fall plot season. And, you know, we're just coming off a pretty good stretch of dryness over on this side of the state. Has it been just as dry over on your side of the state for you? Oh, uh, it's been terrible. Um, absolutely terrible. So we... You know, we've been struggling all, you know, we had a, we had actually had a pretty wet spring. So things, you know, got up and off to the races. Well, then we went from, you know, having a pretty wet spring to um, absolutely the driest period I've probably seen since we've owned the property 40 years or so. Um, you know, I had, uh, I had uh, corn and beans planted. We had, uh, I planted all my screen put 500 bucks worth of miscanthus grass and, you know, the, the rhizomes in the ground. Um, we did a field of soil builder vitalize um, cause we need, we have a field that we needed to get some, you know, some mat biomass in and switch grass, the whole nine yards. And I was up two weeks ago and it was all basically dead. Um, yeah, it's pretty dry. Yeah. I mean like not just dormant, like dead. And so, you know, my, my clover field, I think, um, I am getting a couple of pictures on the cell cam off the clover field. So I think that, you know, this, this rain we did get up there, we got two and a half inches the other night. And um, I think that perked my clover back up at least. So I'll be going up, uh, I'll be going up Friday to just kind of survey the situation. But, um, but yeah, it's been brutal up there. So, um, you know, you, you can't, we can't do any, any uh, weed control on the clover field. We can't do any mowing because it's been, you know, you'll kill it if you, if you try to. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's been, it's been brutal for the deer and I, you know, you can even see it in their antler development. The, the few bucks that we do have are, are, you know, are just, they're just down and, uh, they're not getting they're, that, they're not getting that forage in the prime time yeah. that they need it here right. in, in, in July going into August that, you know, the, 
yep. two to yeah, three more months, right? Right. And then, you know, in Michigan, we can't supplemental feed. We can't do minerals. We can't do anything. So um, they have been hitting my water tank, like, regularly. But, uh, um, you know, that's... That's the only thing we've got that we can, you know, relatively decent get decent pictures on is the is the water right now, and you know, so I don't know. We'll see how it plays out, but it's it's been tough. I mean, you know, you put all this time and energy and money into into trying to set your properties up and you know get them dialed in, and then Mother Nature, you can do everything right, and if Mother Nature doesn't give you rain, it's not going to happen. You know, yeah, talking about you, you said it's been it was you had a wet spring over there, mm-hmm. um, and we talked to to Robbie last week about this. And we asked him this question. I want to ask you, uh, it sounds to me like it's the perfect scenario for EHD. You know, now it's dry. It, well, it, are you guys seeing anything over there or hearing anything yet? So here's the deal. It wasn't until we got this massive rain. Right. Uh, when you have a, when you have, what, what, when you have a, a dry period followed by a wet period. So like the, the, as these ponds have been subsiding, this is the way. This is this is the way I'm understanding it, and everything I I know about it. Um, as these ponds are subsiding, because it's so stinking dry, you don't have that mud as much as you do if you have a rain and then a dry period and then more rain. You have all that mud on the banks. That's where the midge comes from. Mm-hmm. Is all the mud. And so right now it seems that EHD is 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 at bay. I have not heard of any you know, massive outbreaks, um, or see, you know, seen anything online about it. So, um, crossing my fingers, cause you know, our, our lease in Illinois, um, you know, we've got one buck in particular that I have a score to settle with down there and he could be, you know, 190 inches this year. And I certainly don't want to find him along the river. You Do know? you have pictures of him? Um, for the, from this I, year, I should say. Not this year. So okay. our lease down there is all, uh, it's, it's literally, it's Mississippi river bottom. Like I can, I can pee right in the river, Mississippi river from our lease bank. <laughs> so they don't spend a lot of time down there this time of year. They're up, there's a big bluff across the road and they spend most of the summer up in the beans across the, you know, up on that bluff up in the high ground. And then when they cut all the corn up top, that's when all the bucks and those come, you know, come piling down the river bottom. Yep. So I, I do have pictures on my know he may, I hit him last year, I hit him through the back straps, unfortunately. And he was probably going to gross boon last year. And this year, you know, he's, like I said, I, I would venture to say he's going to hit 190 this year. So, but we'll see. But I tell you what, we're uh, we're bumping up here on the first break. Uh, let's take a quick break. We come back. Let's let's kind of talk, pick up where we left off last week with this weather being dry. Uh, and actually, we we did get a little rain since last week, so uh, we got to get started on our fall food plot. So we'll we'll pick up there when we come back right after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Uh, so we got some rain here the other night. We got it here in mid-Michigan, y'all over there. Right, when I was looking at the radar, it looks like Grand Rapids just got hammered. Uh, we like rain, but we don't want a lot of rain too quickly. So uh, we got some water in the ground now. Guys are thinking about getting their, their seed in the ground, getting ready for food plot season here uh, for the upcoming fall. Uh, facing the weather that we've had, what, what do guys need to be thinking right now? Maybe is there something they should be paying more attention to uh, now the way the weather's got us to where we're at? Well, right now, you know, you're going to want to, uh, basically you're going to want to be starting to really start thinking about weed control um, because you've got about a two week window right now. It's, I mean, let's face it. It's basically August 1st. I mean, it's the 26th of July. So we're going to blink and it's going to be August 1st. So a lot of people want to start planting their brassicas, um, you know, over the next 10 days, 15 days. So if you haven't done your weed control already, you're going to want to get on that immediately. Um, 
get that, you know, get your glyphosate sprayed, get, you know, get the weed control done because you want to let that set ideally, you know, 10 days before you do any, you know, disking or tilling. Can you, uh, can, can you, can you shorten that time frame if you don't have enough time? Your mm. belief, can you, can you pull it yeah. off in a, in a weekend spray? I'm just going to pick Friday and Sunday, spray on Friday, plant on Sunday. Could you pull that off? You think? So it's not ideal to get a good kill down. Um, I mean, can you do it? Yeah, it will it work. It will probably help with some of the weeds, but, um, you know, you won't get a good kill. So you, it, Roundup is just, it's not, I mean, it's a, it's a slower acting. It takes, you know, I mean, it, it takes a good 10 days, seven to 10 days to start seeing, um, you know, the results of, or, you know, the die, the die off or the burn down. So, um, you could spray, let it set for the weekend and then, you know, and then till and plant, but ideally you're going to want to give it 10 days. How are you seeing the, the prices of gelipsophate? Yeah. So last year we were selling it for 39 bucks for a two and a half gallon jug. This year we're, we're actually cheaper than anybody around. We're at $110 for two, two and a half gallons. Really? Yeah. I was hearing upwards of $200. No. Well, that maybe for straight roundup, but we, we sell the, the farm works, the generic, okay. uh, 41% glyphosate. And that's, okay. you know, it's, that's, we're at $110 for two and a half gallons. Um, Tractor supply has been, you know, one twenty nine. Um, I've seen, you know, all the way up to one hundred and fifty nine dollars for the same stuff. But amazing, isn't um, it? In one year? Yeah, it's it's crazy. You know, you know, I, you, let's let's face it. I mean, every everything has gone up, and fertilizer costs are up, seed costs are up, uh, glyphosate's up. You know, diesel, gas, everything is up. You know, the Packer Max. Um, you know, we absorbed any price increases as long as we possibly could, but we had to pass it along. You can't, you know, when, when things are going up 20 and 30%, you can't absorb that for very long. <laughs> no, not at all. No, you want to stay open. So, you know, so, you know, we, we, we were forced to do a price increase and, um, you know, that's, it's part of the, you know, it's part of the whole process right now. So unfortunately, but, um, uh, but yeah, you know, you're going to want to, you want to get your, your spraying done. You're going to want to um, start getting your brassicas and, and turnips in the ground soon. And then, um, you know, usually like our cereal grains up here in Michigan, depending on where you're at, like if you're in Northern Michigan, you brought, you're going to want to get your cereal grains in the ground sometime around the 15th of August to the 20th in that window. Um, you know, down like where we're at in Nuego, you know, we like to get our stuff, our, our cereal grains in um right around the first well usually we do it the weekend before labor day that's kind of our our target obviously that date a little bit, so but just for for vacations and everything we have you know uh seven police officers in our family so their time off is hard to come by so we got to schedule it accordingly so um so usually we try to get our cereal grains in you know that 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 weekend before labor day and um you know get get things off to the races so uh, and, and again you know we, we did get some soil moisture which is good um you know it's really going to depend on what happens between now and then um you know and how how things are going to go or if we're going to struggle or if we got to go buy a two thousand gallon water tank to water our plots so <laughs> well you mentioned the rain that you, you all got over there we got a little here uh you know that's that's going to work r- real well now if if we can continue to get some rain Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously working with the Packer Max, that's going to work a lot better with some moisture content in the ground versus powder. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing you, the, the Packer Max, so one of its claims to fame is, you know, uh, seed to soil contact, uh, germination rates, um, skyrocket when you use it, um, because of the moisture retention. Um, so when that the leaves the grooves in the soil, so when it does, when you do get your precipitation, it funnels it down to the bottom of those grooves and holds it there and lets it absorb plus you're compacting the soil so it's not aerated and you know letting releasing all the moisture so if you if you get a good rain on your on your food plot after you plant you know within five to seven days you're going to have germination with a packer if you don't pack it you just drag it who knows when it's going to and and one thing nice about the packer max um we're looking at your website right now so we're live as we're talking about it is you've got several different variations that you can enjoy using the packer max whether it be a single a double um and and whatnot if you want to use a three-point or you want to use it as a tow behind on a four-wheeler or a side-by-side uh so you you are definitely visiting everybody's uh, price range that they want to go after now uh for the, the you're running the special on the pmx 43 hd right now 
Yeah, yep, the three-point hitch, four-footer, yep. We got yep. 70 bucks off of that right now. And then, like, uh, the most popular one, the PMX4 HD, um, when it's dry, how much does something like that weigh? So dry weight on that one is 100 pounds. It's actually just under 100. And then when you fill it with water, uh, it's about 400 pounds. And if you add the wheel kit, then it'd be about 425 pounds. So right there, you know, like you said, if, if, if you're running this thing empty, throwing it in the back of the pickup and getting it where you need to, or, or and then when you go to fill it up, you get that added weight to it. And then when you're done with it, you can just kind of use the water to fill up something. Yeah, you can. I've, we've got a lot of guys that will drain it on their trees or into their uh, into their uh, watering tanks. Um, you know, uh, or we even have guys transport water in it and then pump it out of that into their, you know, into their backpack sprayer. If they're back in the, you know, if they're back in an area where they can't get, you know, a spray or two, then they'll pump their. They make a, a, a transfer pump for a cordless drill. And some guys are using that to pump, you know, pump and fill up their backpack sprayers. And uh, but yeah, they're super versatile because you can, you know, you can take it from property to property, and you know, they're they're just they're easy to handle once they're empty. But yet, when you fill them with water, they do an incredible job. So we have a new product we just launched. Um, it's a it's a conversion kit. We used to well, we still use it, but the pin to drop in pin hitch system. Um, and then we just we just designed and released a, a, a ball hitch conversion kit. So a lot of guys just you know, and it's all two inch ball. And um, so we just released that. So that's for sale on the website. And then we last year we launched the crimper, the Packer Max crimper combo. And a lot of people are getting into the, especially with the price of glyphosate and fertilizers, they're they're wanting to get into this no till system um, to help cut down on the amount of you know spray that they have to use and the amount of fertilizer um you know by crimping and terminating their their planting of rye or, you know cereal rye wheat oats uh, buckwheat um and then you can seed into that and then that helps to suppress the weeds it's making it you know all that organic material that you crimp down breaks down and feeds your soil so so that's been a very popular unit uh, this year. With so with, so with, with that, you would crimp the field first, then plant, then come back over. With Depends the on what you're planting. So if you're if you're doing like brassicas, so we this my buddy down the road. So what we did with his field this year, we crimped it. Uh, and last year, we crimped it in uh, May. And then we just left it. It was all, you know, crimped over. And it was just a mat of the cereal rye stems. And then we came back in August and we broadcast um, um, our, our Packer Max Brassica blend into it. And then we cultipacked it and then fertilized it with the Plot Doctor's liquid fertilizer. And then that stuff shot right to the roof. And so the smaller seeds, you don't necessarily have to plant seed or broadcast before you crimp. Um, but if you were going to replant cereal grains or peas or something like that, you would want to broadcast into the standing uh, cereal cereal rye and then crimp it down and then call the pack. Okay. So gotcha. you want that stuff on top of it. Okay. So um, one of the questions coming in, um, the Packer Max being at is four feet wide. Mm -hmm. Any specific reason four feet? Uh, yes. Um, so number one, it. Uh, is primarily used behind you know a quad runner or a side by side um so it's got to have a smaller width plus um if we keep it under four, 48 inches or 48 or less uh we can still ship it on ups or fedex ground if we go above the, the overall box cannot be any more than 54 inches long otherwise it goes into the next into oversize and so then it pushes the cost of shipping way up so i can ship one of these to south texas you know, in, in, you know, uh, Utah, you know, it just, that's one of the advantages is, and it's all free shipping with it anywhere in the country. Um, but that's one of the reasons we have to keep it under four feet. And then we have a double, you know, we have the double unit that is an eight footer and that we can still ship that because it's two of the fours put together. So I literally just, we just shipped an eight footer, our first, one of our first eight footers up into Canada this, this past, uh, past week. So, um, you know that's a whole new market up there so yeah, that's awesome expanding your, your market right yeah so you know so that's one of the biggest reasons we have the four footer now and you know the other problem is is mold cost you know like if you start getting into a five or six footer you know that mold is going to be you know potentially a hundred thousand dollars just for the mold uh we would have to have probably a bigger um, axle 
we, you know, the axle in it is molded right into the drum. And so if you have a six footer, obviously you're going to have a, a wider angle, you know, a wider area where there could be more flex. And so there's some challenges with that, but um, overall the four footer, I mean, you know, if you put it behind a quad runner and you do a, a, a one acre field, I mean, you can knock that field out in 10 minutes. I mean, it's not a big deal. No, it's not, not at all. I, that's why I use well, the quad. Guys yeah, yep. and, and, and one of the other things about a four footer is if you're by yourself, the, the mobility of it, of turning yep. it or doing what you need to do. Like we talked about emptying it, getting into yep. the back of the pickup or whatever it might be. Uh, four feet seems to be about a, a great number. And like you said, a lot of it is saves you on shipping. Um, is there uh, another question coming in? Uh, the warranty on it. What do you mm-hmm. got there? Yeah, so the warranty on uh, against manufacturer defect is two years. Um, we have, uh, I mean, we have a, it's a solid warranty. We, we don't, it's honestly, we don't run very many warranty claims because they just don't break. I mean, they just don't. And, you know, obviously we've had some extreme cases where, where one is broke and we've had to replace either parts or the whole thing. Um, but I mean, it's rare and, you know, we, we pride ourselves on our customer service. Um, I treat my customers how I want to be treated and that has gone, done very well for our, for our business model. Because if I always say the judge of a company isn't always, isn't when things are going really good. It's when something happens that, you know, I had a guy call me, this was, I don't even know, it was earlier this year. It was a Saturday night, called, left a message. I didn't have service at the time. Said, hey, I just bought my Packer Max. First time around the plot, uh, the, the scraper bar broke, and I can't do my, my plot. I have all the seed down on the ground. And so I got the message, and I'm like, oh, crap. So I called him right away, and he was blown away that I, the owner of the company called him on a Saturday night you know, from our cabin. And I said, hey, I, there's nothing I can do about it until monday i can't like ship you one until monday but i'm here to tell you i will get a brand new unit to you um it'll it'll leave my building on monday you're gonna have it on tuesday and you can pack your stuff on you know on wednesday i said it's not ideal but i'm you know i'm really sorry that that happened it's you know it's rare and he's like well to be honest with you i was expecting a fight <laughs> you know? <laughs> right you know i mean that's just the way it is today like you know i but i'm you know we stand behind our product and if you have a problem with it we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take care of it and um you know and, and again if you have questions on the product you know if you call our phone number you're probably gonna get, well you will you'll get me or my son jeremiah and you know we're gonna walk you through some stuff and and help you out so I tell you what, we're coming up to our second break. And people, if you're if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching live on Facebook, just go on over to, to packermax.com. Uh, we're showing the website live as we talk about it here on the show. Uh, that's why you got to watch the live Facebook. But uh, we're going to take our second break. And when we come back, we got some more questions. All right, we're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now... The most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. All right, we're back. Third segment. Uh, answer a question in the break. If you listen to the podcast, obviously, you got to go watch the live feed. That's right. <laughs> uh, question coming back in here, talking about getting back on the Packer Max. Uh, made in the USA? 100%. There you go. And that's going to stay that way. There you go. And we're glad to hear it. Glad to hear that. Uh, hey, those of you that, that know me know that I'm an outspoken uh <laughs> <laughs> you laugh American, st- you American laugh. loving person. I have a you know I have several flags in my in my shop and I have uh I have a thin blue line bracelet on. My family is deep blue in law enforcement and my son is a, a marine veteran and so yeah, it's very very important to me that that this is going to be is going to stay American. So, I mean, the nuts and bolts are probably, you know, imported, let's be honest, but you know, 99% of it is uh is made right here in the, in the US. So, our drums are cat or are molded in uh, molded in in Milwaukee, uh, just north of Milwaukee. 
and then uh, all of our steel is um, is done right here in Grand Rapids. So you outspoken? I don't believe it. <laughs> Not for a minute. <laughs> you know, but but is is <laughs> <laughs> as much as outspoken as he is, if you ever sit down or stand with and talk to him at a show, you can tell his passion that Absolutely. he has for what his arm represents, right? Antlers, outdoors, um, and everything, thin blue line, uh, the American flag itself. But if, if you ever get a chance and you, you stop by, I know he's always busy when we're there, but if you get a few minutes to stop by, uh, talk to Lincoln, you'll understand his passion uh, for what he does. And um, it's amazing. You know, we met him when it was let him go, let him grow tech. And we knew then, and uh, we've just been friends ever since. But uh, are you doing any shows this fall that's going to put you somewhere that people can come out and see you? Um, so we probably will not be doing any shows this fall. Um, my schedule, our schedule has just been insane. And, um, we, we possibly, if they still have a spot, I might send a crew over to woods and waters, but I'm not positive. Um, I probably won't be there, um, personally, but, uh, but we might try to slip a booth in and just, I'm not positive. Um, and then we 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 were gonna do Deer Fest over in the, in Wisconsin, but um, but we've kind of pulled up pulled up on that one too. Um, it, we just it's especially that one's in August, and this is our absolute busiest time of year. So it's hard to let um, people out of the shop when you're yeah. filling orders. Yep, it is, and you know we're so we've we've changed our business model a little bit too. Uh, we've we've grown substantially. I mean, uh, we we had a four hundred percent increase in in two thousand twenty one, and now we're you know we're we're on a steady climb for twenty two. And what we did, what we ended up doing was we were either going to have to get out of our shop here in Rockford and get so what this is what we were going to do. And our our landlord was building another unit next door to us. And they were going to do a build the suit for us and then let me out of this lease if we moved right into that lease. Well, it obviously would have been a lot more money. We would have had to hire more employees. We would have had to, you know, workman's comp, you know, the whole nine. And um, so what we ended up doing, uh, that building site fell through because they hit PFAS in the water. So what we ended up doing, I, I, this is a gentleman I met a few years ago at my from my previous employer, um, they are doing we have all of our packaging and fulfillment is being done at another location in kent city um so they have a basically what happens is is we're just we're just doing all of the ordering and managing the business here doing all of our sales and everything taking care of the website you know social media everything here we have our our seed sales here in the shop and then they're doing all the packaging and shipping off site in kent city um, we went from 250 orders behind and they said, okay, while they were getting set up, continue, we continued to ship out of here. As soon as we got set up over there, then they said, okay, stop shipping. We stopped, they started, and within 10 days, we were completely caught up. So um, it's been a really good move for us. They have been nothing short of absolute professionals and they are really good at what they do. And they do all of my inventory control. Um, you know, ordering everything. So obviously, you know, it's costing us a little bit more, but it, we're not having to invest in this big building and all these employees. And, you know, so um, they employ all the people and, you know, we, we pay them uh, accordingly. So it's really worked well for us. And, you know, I sell real estate too, hunting properties, um, you know, so, you know, we're hoping to be able to spend a little bit more time on that. We've got a couple other things in the works that I can't really put out there yet but um some 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 possibly some really cool stuff happening too so well you switched to business model orders through the roof yep. you know we had the dirty word covid come in two years ago yep put a lot of people out of work people still spent money though they wanted to go out and they wanted to hunt you know yep. we had a lot of new people getting into the outdoors yep. yeah for sure okay so people are going back to work now um not all but some of them are and now the economy is starting to turn upside down. Uh, you know, we're looking like we're going to be heading into a recession. Interest rates are through the roof. What's pumping up your business and what's sustaining it and making you guys thrive where others are having problems? Well, I think I think at the end of the day, everybody knows, you know, as hunters and outdoorsmen, especially the passionate, you know, diehards, you know, we're going to find a way to get our equipment. We're going to find a way to get our food in the ground. We're going to find a way to, you know, and, and at the, I don't like to, to pigeonhole anybody, but, you know, a lot of my customers either have property or they lease property or, 
Um, you know, so their disposable income is probably a little bit, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, bigger than maybe somebody that doesn't. Um, so I think that's helping us. COVID, you know, pushed us through the roof. And I, you know, uh, we, we stopped ordering frames when COVID hit because I thought nobody's going to buy these things when they're losing their jobs. Well, mm -hmm. it was just the opposite. Um, you know, we went through this. I mean, it just is incredible growth and it's just continued. And um, people are people are very I mean, they they're the, the, the management end of it has gotten very big. People are pro managing their properties. They're managing their herds. Um, you know, it, it I think a lot of it, too, is uh, the, the need for call to packers uh, is is been very well known. And you can't find them right now. And they are very expensive. And our price point um, is still, even with the price increases, uh, we're still cheaper than any call to packer on the market. And so, um, and we can ship it to your door for free. You know, if you bought a, a, a brilliant off, you know, wherever, they're going to have to ship it to you. It's going to cost you, you know, three, four, five hundred dollars $500, depending on how big it is to get. It. So, right. um, and then the versatility of ours, you know, and I think also, you know, word gets out when you take care of people, you know, people talk about it. And, you know, Absolutely. like I said, we, we take care of people and, and it's not, you're, you're not just buying a Packer Max, you're buying us and our service to you. So I think that, you know, that well, speaks. Well, it speaks volumes because when, when we talk with other people, Packer Max and the name Lincoln Roan is interchangeable, right? If you say Lincoln Roan and they say Packer Max, you say, you know, Packer Max, Lincoln Roan. Um, mm -hmm. and, and now you've got Jeremiah with you and Mark Coleman is, even says, it, Jeremiah is top notch. He met him at the Indy and again at the Illinois this spring at those shows. And yeah. it just goes to show you that, you know, it's a you're you're doing a family business, which is awesome. Yeah, and we and we might be folding some more people into it too here, the family, you know, uh, as we go. So um it's it's honestly it's it's a I mean it's a blessing and we've just you know uh we've just been so fortunate and you know I good good help is very, very hard to find as everybody is well aware right and to have my son who is, you know, like I said, he's a marine veteran and you don't become a marine and have a bad work ethic. And so the dude works hard and he takes it seriously. And he, you know, uh, he knows that at some point this company will probably be, you know, his or partially his. And, you know, he's taken some ownership of it, and which is really awesome because I couldn't do what I do without him or somebody, you know, with a good work ethic that's going to back me up. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's been a, a huge blessing. And, you know, we just we just are very fortunate and very thankful, you know, to the big, big guy upstairs that, you know, he lets us do with us every day. So it's fun. <laughs> it's hard work. But it fun. is hard. It is well. You put it in. You get. You, you know. It. It doesn't come easy. And and how many years has Packer Max been around? So uh, it's been around about. I think it was two thousand three was when it was launched. And then I bought it four years ago um, from the original owner. And you know, I mean, he he. I, I'm not. I always say I'm not smart enough to dev to develop the Packer Max, but I'm smart enough to buy the company when I had a chance because I know it was an awesome product. And, you know, I bought one about 10 years ago and it changed. It was, it was a game changer for our food plot program. It really was. And, you know, I have, I have so many people in the outdoor industry using it now, like Sean Lundy, uh, formerly with Jury Outdoors. I, you know, I've gotten to know him very well. And he's just, a, he's an awesome guy and he freaking loves the Packer Max. He's, he said, it's just a game changer. Robbie Pruitt, who he had on last week. That dude is salt of the earth. I love him, and he absolutely loves the Packer Max. He talks about it all the time, um, which has been huge for us. I mean, you know, the guy is, uh, I just, you know, I try to give him stuff. He's like, no, 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 you know, <laughs> like, let me do something for you, Robbie. You know, I mean, for crying out loud. And, uh, you know, in that, uh, you know, I spent I spent this past week with Don Higgins. You know, the guy, <clears throat> some people don't like him. Some people love him. I happen to think he's an awesome guy. He's a good Christian guy, and he, he kills big bucks like it's, I mean, it's insane. He's got three bucks over 200 inches, you know, 170-inch bucks like, you know, you know, I don't even know how many booners he has. <clears throat> and the dude, we hit it off immediately, and, you know, uh, it's just, it's cool to be able to hang out with these people that I'm going on a muzzleloader hunt next year with, uh, with Eric, ba Eric Both and Drew Outdoors. Um, you know, it's just been, it's just been fun. It's been a dream come true. And, and, uh, I get, uh, like I said, I'm very fortunate to get to do this. Every so, so, so the suggestion has been made that if, so it's an 03 next year is 23, which makes it the 20 year anniversary that it should be done with a red, white, and blue frame anniversary edition. Great idea. 
Send the send the, the check to Mark Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mark. Yeah, you know, I'm kind of trying to scroll through a little bit. I see Mark is right. Uh, yeah. but it is uh, a great idea. <laughs> you know, and it's just one of those things. You know, you got like like we've talked about. You know, your passion for it and everything. You know, and and we're out there doing our our fall food plots and we're getting there. I know one of the questions a little bit further back was, do you know the pH levels that you're carrying in your fields? Do I know? Yeah. Yes, I know. Absolutely. I know I know what the pH in every single one of my fields is. And they're because averaging? Uh, about 6.8. There you go. And you know that because you do because soil tests. Because we do soil tests. And, and, you know, it, it, details matter. And if your goal is to just, you know, throw some stuff out and get a little bit of green for the deer to, to munch on, um, you know, you can, by all means, man, you can you can till some soil or disc some soil up, throw some cereal rye out, throw a little triple 19 on it and probably have a pretty decent stand. But if your goal is to, is to you know, attract and hold deer, feed them nutrition um, to better your herd, to better your box, to, you know, uh, make it come full circle, then details matter. You're going to want to know what your pH is. You're going to want to know what your, you know, your organic material or organic matter is. Get a good soil test. Know how much you know, nutrients you got to put into the ground, know how much lime you have to put down. Don't guess. And another thing that I hear every single day, how, how big is your food plot? Oh, it's about an acre. Okay. Do you know, have any idea how big an acre is? Not really. It's a football field. So is your plot as big as a football field? Cause that's pretty big. Um, no, it's probably about half a football field. Okay. Well that matters because if I sell you enough to plant an acre of brassicas and you put it on a half acre, well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be very happy with me because it's going to choke them out. Your stuff's not going to grow because you put too much seed down. So know how big your food plot is. If you if you get out there with a, r- a range finder, just range it, man. You know, Or we have all these apps at our disposal now. We have Onyx, we have HuntWise, we have all these apps, man. Just uh, farm logs is a good one. If you, you just outline it, boom, it tells you how big it is. Absolutely. Is it a quarter acre? You know, I, I, I bet you, I'll be three quarters of the people that I talk to every day, they, their food plot is, is about a half acre or, or even less. Mm-hmm. And it's rare to have a two or three acre food plot, you know, in, in, uh, to most deer hunters. Well, um, we talked about last week overseeding, you know, and most yep. people, they say, well, you know, if this much is good, then twice that much has got to be twice as good. And that's not the case. No, no, no. That's why you need now, to know. You can get away with a little bit more with like a cereal grain. Like, you know, we sell a grain, man, it's rye, oats, winter wheat, and peas. You know, you can get away with it planting a little bit heavy with that stuff because you're still going to get your stem count. Um, you know, rye is very pro- prolific, so, you know, it, it branches out and grows. But, you know, you're still going to get your stem count. But if you're starting to plant brassicas and clovers and stuff like that, man, you really want to know exactly how much you're putting in. Um, you know, it just, it's super important. And, uh, you know, like I said, you can, you can range it, you can put it on Onyx and just figure it out and know for sure. And don't guess, mm-hmm. like, you know, don't guess at your pH. Well, I put some lime on last year. Maybe I'll put a little more on this. No, go get a $10 soil sample. Know how much to put in. Plus you're, you're wasting money if you don't. Yeah, it's expensive. You're literally wasting money. You know, and if, and if you're guessing at 300 pounds an acre for fertilizer, and it's only going to cost, you know, it only needs 200 pounds. Well, guess what? You just wasted, the, uh, you know, over a hundred bucks for a hundred pounds of fertilizer. So yeah. um, it's just, you know, details matter. And if you do it right, you will, you know, and then it all comes down to mother nature. If she, you know, gives us rain, then, um, you know, Lord will, then you'll have a pretty good stand, but um, you can do everything right and not get rain and be in the same boat I'm in with dead corn and dead screen yeah. and dead everything. So, well, we're talking about seeds right now. You you got your own line of seeds as well. Yeah, so we we have a Packer Max blend. Um, we have uh, five two outdoors blends it for us. Um, I wanted just to do. I, I have certain brassicas and turnips that I like, and I like to have part of that whole overseeding thing is I like to have my my brassicas separate from my my radish. A lot of guys will, or a lot of seed blends mix the radish in with the brassicas while I constantly put too much seed down because you have to open the gate further to let the radish through. Mm-hmm. And so um, I what we did when they blended this for us is we it's all brassicas in our brassica blend and then we sell a separate bag of radish um, that's a, a two pound bag that you just then top seed in you know in the field. So 
Um, it's got purple top turnips, um, hunter brassica, which is a, you know, a forage brassica, forage colliards, which is super important because those actually regenerate as they eat them. Um, most brassicas don't. Uh, uh, Barknot turnip, which is another a forage turnip, uh, Winifred brassica, and canola. And canola is very attractive to deer. Um, anybody that's ever hunted over, over canola will seek it out at all costs. I had a guy drive from Lansing because we have canola in our blend. <laughs> so, and you can't find straight canola right now, and it's very expensive if you do. So, um, so yeah, we have that, and then we have uh, we have uh, we have clover chicory, we have red clover, we have you know screens, um, we have all kinds of different different blends from from five two outdoors. But the the Nebraska blend is my custom Packer mix. So. Onward and upward, man. It just keeps adding yeah. to the lineup. I love it. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we have in our shop, we have plot doctor fertilizer. We've actually switched over to almost exclusively uh, liquid fertilizer and lime now. Um, it's just, it's, it's, the input is so much less. You're putting, you know, if you put in, if you have a hundred pound bag of triple 19, it's only about 60 pounds of actual nutrients. The rest of it is basically salt. So all that salt is going into your soil. It's not good for it over the years. It starts to build up. Um, the, 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 um, the liquid fertilizer from plot doctor is all carbon based and every molecule of that is available to the plant. You, you don't have to worry about burning. If you, if you do a four, a foliar application of, on your screen, for instance, you can do a foliar application and not worry about burning it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, I mean, the, the earth is made of carbon, so why not use a carbon-based fertilizer? Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, i tell you what, uh, we're bumping up here a little bit past our second, or our last break. Uh, let's take our last break. We come back. I want to switch gears a little bit. Sure. I'm not going to promise that I won't get you into Facebook. <laughs> no promises made, but uh, we're going to step outside. We come back, we're going to talk about uh, the recent Michigan deer hunting regulations that's just come out. I want to get your take on it. So we're going to step outside. Oh, great. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSEarchery.com. Last segment. We saved the best for last. We got, so. one, we got one question. Okay. Uh, we talked about the Pacamax. We talked about uh, the Crimper, uh, the, the, the Pacamax seed label. Uh, do you have anything in such as sprayers or spreaders in your lineup? So we have um, we have a, uh, a solo spreader that we sell. It's a solo hard side spreader. Um, it's it's hands down the best one I've ever used, and that's why we sell it. Um, if you if you've used like a bag spreader before, you will you will absolutely love the solo hard side spreader, and we sell those. Um, I don't have any sprayers at the moment. Um, but we are trying to work out a deal with Fimco to get a bunch of, uh, of sprayers in here too. So, okay. Uh, as of right now, I don't have any sprayers. Okay. But we have habitat hooks for you know hinge cutting. Um, we have you know several different types of uh, uh, chemicals from Roundup to 2,4-D to clethanone. We have uh, some mineral for our Ohio customers that drive down to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> or or the UP. You can use them in UP, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Or UP. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that buy it from the UP. Okay. Um, you know, so, but yeah, we got a pretty nice little offering. No, another question. Uh, you got on your right shoulder there sitting on that table is a game camera? Oh, yeah. What, what, is, is that one of your go-to type game cameras? Yeah, that's not there on purpose, but yeah. Um, so I, I've, um, I've switched over almost exclusively to, to Tacticam wireless and they've got the XD, the SK, the X. I've got them all. I think I shoot, I think I have 14 of them now. Um, and I am a, I am a uh, brand ambassador for Tacticam. And the only reason I am is because I really like their camera. Um, one, one cool thing that they came out with now is they have a uh, battery packs, um, lithium battery packs, and they, you can take them out of the kit. Ca- out of the camera, swap it with another one, and take this one back and charge it. 
Um, they last just as long as, as you know, double uh, A lithium batteries. You get a lot of life out of them. Um, and then you're not continuously taking batteries and chucking them. I mean, we, I have a five gallon bucket full of batteries that are, you know, uh, that are just, you know, I need to dispose of. So um, just a little tip, I've, I've got a bunch of these. They're 40 bucks, I think. But, you know, uh, to, to load your camera with lithium batteries is is you know probably 20 bucks just for one round so these will you can recharge these indefinitely uh, but yeah i love the tacticam i have the sk the xd the x all of them i have them down in illinois um you know it's i have i've had one down there since uh since gun season in Illinois last year and it's still still snapping picks so that was a big discussion today uh while i was at work actually there was a group chat going on and i couldn't get involved in it but that's what the discussion was is trail cam so mm-hmm. yeah we were we were having a unj uh powwow about uh cameras and it, i just happened to look at your picture and I look over your your shoulder and i'm like wait a minute we might as well ask him what does the man the myth the legend lincoln roam <laughs> there you go <laughs> now you know now we know yeah. you know yeah. and, and we've heard like adam says we've heard good things about him and we Basically, among the team here, we, we got them all. Spy Point, Moultrie, you name yep. it, we got them. And so it was just one of those conversation starters we had. You know, and it's just, it's awesome. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think about some of these places? I think we might have asked you this before, but what do you think about some of these places banning them? I think it's insane. I mean, especially, on, I'm, okay, if they want to ban them on public property, I guess knock yourself out. But it's just a simple, it's an overreach for crying out loud. I mean, if a guy, if I have, you know, our property in New Ego, if I'm going to put a, you can't tell me I can't put a freaking trail camera out on my property. I mean, how, how is that even possible? It's stupid. I, 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 I kind of agree <laughs> with you there because I'd like, if, if you have data that backs it up, i.e. Uh, DNR police reports, DNR reports that said, hey, we had an increase in uh, fighting, whatever you want to call it. But if you don't present any data to the facts and just say, it'll cause this, I have... I get kind of leery as to you don't give me data. I don't give you right. No, I'm, I'm not. It's it's a uh, trespasser surveillance cameras is what I call. It. That's yeah. <laughs> and I actually have signs from Tacticam that say this property is under surveillance. Blah blah blah. By you know yeah. uh, wireless surveillance. So yeah, and just in that regard, it's it, they're incredible. But I mean, mm-hmm. you know, let's face it. Okay, so if we're gonna ban trail cameras, then we need to ban you know range finders, and we need to ban. Uh, you know, crossbows and compound bows and, you know, inline muzzle loaders and let's come on. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, okay, so now we got got you wound up. That's good. Right. Now, right. Uh, I, I threw now. I threw the hook out. <laughs> how about we how about we ban shooting small bucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well are you well, let me first things up first, you have to mandatory deer check your deer this year. What's your yes. thoughts on that? So I, honestly, I don't hate the idea. I mean, I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, whatever. A lot of states do it. Um, Michigan had their. I'm one of the few people that actually uh, thinks that their survey system was it was very scientifically sound. Um, however, if people don't believe it, it's useless. Mm-hmm. And so, by doing this. Uh, you know, people are going to have, you're going to have, there's, I think they're still going to do the survey system. So they'll have two sets of data to be able to pull numbers. from. I think that's good. Um, am I okay with having a mandatory check my deer? Yes, I am okay with that. Um, there's people that aren't. Um, I'm not sure why, to be honest with you, because people have been screaming for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I've been doing, you know, part of the, the, the whole regulation thing for a long time. And, and, that's one of the biggest keys that people have wanted was mandatory checks because the DNR has no idea how many deer are shot. Honestly, it doesn't matter how many deer are shot. It really doesn't. The trends in the harvest is what matters. Mm-hmm. You know, the upward trend, downward trend, they don't have to know ever to every single deer that was shot. They really don't. But if it makes people feel warm and fuzzy and they know how many are shot, then, then I think it's a win because then people can stop complaining that the DNR doesn't know how many deer are shot. So, um, you know, I mean, I'm okay with it. I, I, I've, I've gone as far as to recommend that they do an app. Everybody has a smartphone now. Every tag has a freaking bar, a barcode on it. Why can't you just scan your barcode when you shoot an animal? Punch in some, you know, your, your, your sex, the, you know, number of points, 
whatever and and download that to the app it's instinct they would have they would have real time information especially with doe harvest because if you let's let's get some quotas established and okay well Niagara County you know our quota is going to be 6000 does just throwing that number out there you know as as people are checking these deer in they're going to know exactly how many deer to the minute were shot where they were shot and then they can say okay well we didn't hit our target of 6000 Let's, you know, we, we, we need to, you know, amp it up a little bit, but people could, could see those numbers in real time and say, mm-hmm. okay, well, maybe I need to shoot a couple more does. Um, I think it'd be very useful if they, if they did it yep. um, and they would know instantly, you know, what the doe harvest would be. So um, uh, the, 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 the current system is website only. Uh, no phone system. Um, I believe, yeah, yeah. It, that that to me is kind of a, a web browser. I like the app idea. Uh, the app idea is great. I like the barcode idea. I mean, we've got QR codes. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, why a barcode? I mean, the same thing, basically yeah. the same type technology. <laughs> why well, not it, put that it, on so you can scan it? I like that exactly. idea. Exactly. It, it would take 15 minutes to build an app, and you know, and if you don't have a smartphone, the dude standing next to you does. Yeah. You know, and if you don't have service, well, then you just do it when you get to a point where you have service. Yeah. And I just think it'd be, you know, I think it'd be incredibly useful, instant, it, like up in the TV zone, okay, mm-hmm. where they want, you know, they want to have these late seasons. Well, if they knew exactly how many does had been shot, maybe they pull the late season and mm-hmm. don't do it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they amp it up. Right, right. Yep. Maybe, you know, maybe we need, hey, guys, you know, we're going to we're going to extend this or we're going to extend know, do whatever. another another week or another five days or what have right. you. Yeah. Right. You know, we need another hundred does shot. OK, well, yeah. then maybe then guys, would, it, it, then you have some you have some ownership and some participation. Mm-hmm. And I think that would go a long way. But yeah. you know, I've, I've dropped that suggestion many times and, and they were going to pursue it. And then we get the, the, the computer check instead. So, yeah. uh, you know, again, well, they don't listen. They, don't, they didn't ever listen to anything. So. Well, <laughs> they, the thing that, the opposite of what I say. The thing that kind of that kind of got me, and, and I, I know I'm going into the weeds a little bit, though. They're talking about the 72-hour time period, you know, giving people leeway to get their deer checked in. The mm-hmm. thing that I worry about is if, uh, you know, like Thanksgiving weekend, that's a prime example of what Danny and I said. Guy goes up, you know, he, he go, takes Wednesday off work. He's in camp Wednesday morning. He hunts Wednesday, then Thanksgiving. You know, he's got five days of field. And maybe he's in the UP where there's no service. Uh, then maybe he doesn't he doesn't want to break camp, you know. I mean, he's going to bust up his camp coming out to find cell service. I don't think they should penalize somebody uh, for, for if they report it and it's over 72 hours. Let's say it's five, that fifth day or fourth day before they come yeah. out of camp. As long as they report it, I don't think there should be any penalties for that. And I think putting that 72 hour on it to me that I don't like that. You know, and I, and I understand that, um, you know, Illinois, we have, I think we have 24 hours in Illinois. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, it, uh, you, you, you can adjust, you can do what's necessary. I mean, I've been all the way across the UP. There's some pockets of, you know, maybe 15 or 20 minute drives where you don't have service, but mm-hmm. you know, today, most areas you're going to be within a few minutes of service. Sure. I believe and um, you know maybe not always there's always exceptions but I I don't think that if if somebody checks their deer at, at 80 hours or, or 90 hours mm-hmm. or whatever that number is I don't I don't think they're gonna have a warden knocking on your door uh, you know, I would I think hope not the biggest thing I think that they're worried that they're, they're they, they want this thing checked before you process it or before it goes to a taxidermist or before it goes to a meat processor yeah and so uh, Dean Smith is saying that uh, Alaska allows 15 days post hunt, so it gives gives somebody time to get out of the field. You know, post hunt, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, every state's yeah. different. So, but, uh, yeah, I think you know, I think like I said, I hope I would hope that they would that they would you know have some leeway. In I hope there, there's so. some discretion. Okay, yeah, exactly. And I think I think that's the key word. It's it's officer discretion, and mm-hmm. they have discretion with baiting. They have discretion with you know many things. So. Okay, well, let's look at uh, these these rules come out, uh, the, the new deer hunting regs. They came out, what, uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Uh, yeah, it was, it was. So we just got our deer harvest report back from last year, and there, there's a big bugaboo right now online. People are complaining that, okay, so we've got all of our data now, but they let the regs out for this year before they compile the data to set this year's rules by. What's your take? Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Uh, I already know, but... For well, those, you those know, are listening that don't know. 
So yeah, so they they've um, they made the decisions before they have the debt, mm-hmm. and you know this whole this whole CWD uh, test area for antler point restrictions or this you know this scientific study that they did is a is is a complete waste of time, resources, money. Mm-hmm. All of the above. It, it, it got people super excited in these three counties to have antler point restrictions for three years, and then they jerk the carpet off from underneath them before they even have the, the, the information, mm-hmm. before they can even vote on what they should have done. It did exactly what they wanted it to do. It increased freaking doe harvest in those areas yep. from 0.7 to 1.2 does per buck. It did what it wa- what they wanted it to do, and in- instead they go, no, we're going to pull it, and then we're going to go, you know, just the opposite to you can shoot two spike horns if you want and 10 does mm-hmm. and so it just makes no sense like if 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 what they did made sense it would be one thing but it just, it makes zero sense to make regulations based on data that they don't even have and it's so it's incredibly frustrating it just is and um I, I I just I just wonder those that are in charge like do they do they think this stuff through before they do it or do they I mean how do they how does that doing that like how does who makes that decision i don't i don't understand it i really don't you know and we went to proposal g years ago to use sound scientific data to make these choices or these decisions and uh this this is just bass backwards of what Mm -hmm. we voted on years ago so dealing with with the National Resource Commission and the DNR for the last 10 years, I've stepped back. You guys know that. I, mm-hmm. I'm just, they've burned me out. And, uh, you know, we've been lied to, cheated, you know, uh, you name it, they've done it to us, bled us to water and then poisoned it. And then, you know, uh, so working with them, I think proposal G needs to be honestly rethought because what we have now is we have a bunch of ex-bureaucrats and lawyers and everybody else on the on our Natural Resource Commission. We have no, we have no uh, citizen. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be made up of citizens. And why do we not have a deer manager professional on that commission? Right. Why do we not have that? Wayne sitting. Why mm-hmm. is he not sitting on a commission? Yep. You know, I mean, we've been why begging is, for that. Yeah. You know, and 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 uh, why is the former director of the Department of Natural Resources on that commission? He stepped from the Department of Natural Resources right into the commission. Mm-hmm. How did? I mean, is that not a conflict of interest? Is that how does that even happen? You know, and so. Um, and I'm not saying that the people on the commission are bad people. I'm not saying that at all. I don't. I just. I just don't think that they uh, are making sound decisions um, based on data and scientific evidence. And um, we have. We we need a deer man. That's all there is to it. Or two. Um, you know that knows a little bit about deer. Even somebody that I mean, just that is willing to look at. Uh, data for mm-hmm. what it is. We have we have sound data from the twelve county, thirteen counties under antler point restrictions right here in this state. That it's, it's our own state. It's our own, and it have it has it is absolute unequivocal proof that deer hunters love it. They hunt more. They are happier with their with their hunting. Uh, they are more engaged. They 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 uh, are losing fewer hunters uh, than the rest of the state. Mm-hmm. Uh, How is that not a win? Why would you not want that for the whole state? Why? I I, I can't fathom an answer to the question. We've asked the same question yeah. for, like you said, the last ten years. Yeah, it just like, it, it whole, keeps. We, we have a holy grail in the Northwest Twelve, and we have you know, a, and, and you go to you know the the core CWD areas, and and it's a freaking just a massacre, mm-hmm. and unfortunately. You know, a lot of guys participate in it. And, you know, the Let Them Go, Let Them Grow group has changed a lot of people's thought process and mm-hmm. made a lot of people think. And I think that's the biggest feather in, you know, my cap and the others that helped along the way build it to what it is um, or what it was. Um, you know, th- we, we can we can be proud of the fact that we've made people think and think about what they're shooting. Think about their harvest decisions. Think about the, the actual uh, the deer herd and not continue to take, take, take mm-hmm. and actually give back. Yep. And, um, you know, we haven't gotten any regulation help. We haven't gotten anything. But I, I do believe that we've had a, a big impact in, in helping uh, this state and changing that mindset of I got to get my buck. You know what? If you don't get a buck, you're going to be OK. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you if you 
absolutely wanted some venison. You know, there's so many doe opportunities. You know, yeah. wow, I can't shoot a doe. You know, I won't have any deer. Yeah. Well, then, I mean, literally, there's state land. We have some of the most, some of the most, or the most state land in almost any state in the country, mm-hmm. you know, or public land. It's state and federal. But, you know, travel a little bit and go shoot a doe. It's not difficult yeah. uh, if you want some meat, you know. I mean, we got a farmer in Fremont that's begging us to come out and, and har- you know, and shoot does and i'm like he's like everybody wants to punt bucks but nobody will shoot does i'm like we'll come shoot your bean fed does here right here you know uh, <laughs> right. yeah i'm, I'm all about eating. it yeah exactly so you know i think i think uh i think at the end of the day you know we've, we've made some people think and um you know and i'm not saying that that we're not going to re-engage but when you st- it, it we started to re-engage and then all of a sudden they do this mm-hmm. with the regulations and you go what's the point seriously man i'm gonna go i'm gonna be hunting in saskatchewan the last week of october this year i'm gonna be coming back from there i'm going directly to my lease in illinois Mm -hmm. for 10 days i'm gonna come back i am gonna hunt michigan's gun season with my dad because that's what we do right um and then i'm going right back to illinois for their shotgun season or well now gun season Mm -hmm. um and then i'm probably gonna either do a late season hunt in wisconsin or ohio and so i'm gonna get my my time in michigan keeps getting shorter and shorter and you know i mean we we, the biggest buck we have on camera uh you know so far is like an 80 inch eight point and i'm just i'm gonna take my grandkids out and you know let them shoot uh him or you know another buck and 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 just enjoy that time that i have with them and but when it comes to my my serious hunting i'm gonna it's gonna be done out of state and myself and thousands of other hunters are doing the same thing and they wonder why we're losing hunters right exactly robbie pruitt says one of the best guys i have ever known Who's that? Got to be talking about you, you, man. Got to be talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, right back at you, Robbie. I feel the same way about you, brother. Adam, I, I... Adam Wynn says, uh, years ago he found the Let Him Go, Let Him Grow page, and it changed his mind on shooting small bucks. Who said that? Uh, Adam Wynn. Uh, he's on our staff here uh, at Up North <laughs> Journal. Uh, he's, awesome. he's been buckless for the last two years. He's been passing of young deer over, over those two years. That's that's awesome. I mean, it really is. And that You know, that it makes... It makes what we, you know, what we've done, you know, worth it when I hear that. And, you know, I know the other guys that have helped along the way, mm-hmm. you know, really appreciate hearing that too, because, it, you know, we did, we worked our bots off, you know, not just with the department and meetings and everything, but we did summits. We had these, you know, what well, you guys yep. have been to yeah. a couple of things. I mean, we, that, yep. those were not, those were a lot of work. They were good. <laughs> yeah, they, they were good. Fun. They were fun. You know, a lot of right. work. A lot of damn work. So, well, I got I got one more statement here. I want to read, and we'll close on this. I want to get your thoughts on it, and it's from our, our buddy Dean again. Dean Smith says, uh, since we already mentioned the DNR director, he says DNR director has sent over a new interpretation of their proposal G to the NRC, and are going to usurp the power of the NRC. Well, good. <laughs> so, I'd like to see that proposal. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it published. So, yeah, or the, that interpretation of the proposal, yeah, too, because I, it it uh, something needs to change because it it's just not working. And if it was if it was were if it was doing what it was intended to do, that'd be great. But it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not even close. It's a, it's a it's a political body of people that have been given the power to control the entire state's natural resources, and they don't have any freaking idea what they're doing was there five people on that commission my opinion seven seven okay i knew it was 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 an odd number yeah Yeah. so you got seven people that that are that are setting policy for the whole state of michigan uh political appointees favors to certain people uh a lot of times as well so uh i i just i yeah we could talk all night this could be a series of 10 shows exactly and um with that uh dean smith says it's not good oh figures okay Oh, it's not good. Yeah, that's what he says. So you know how that goes. I'll have to. I'll have to see if I can get my hands on that. But yeah. I, you know, it's just like I said. It's um, it's 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 just very frustrating, and it's it's the same way with all you know with with you know the Grand Rapids City Commission. Let's say they're just getting their butts handed to them right now. You know, um, they're it's just a weird time right now, and I think 
you know, the Natural Resource Commission is, is again, it's made up of, of a body of individuals that shouldn't be there, and, mm-hmm. um, or at least most of them. We shouldn't have former, you know, directors and, and uh, lawyers and, do, you know, that don't, that mm-hmm. they just don't know. We need a, we need a Wayne sitting on the, on the, on the NRC. You need, you need a, uh, you an need, advocate for the you need, you need more than that. You need uh, enough advocates that if there's a vote, they're just not a proxy vote. It's, it's, mm-hmm. you yeah. gotta, you gotta have that or else, uh, like Dean Smith says here, change the NRC, not the premise of pro- pro- proposal G, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. You know, that's the other thing that we need to do is we need to we need to research our governor vote very carefully. I have met with uh, and I'm going to drop the name Ryan Kelly. I've had you know I've had several meetings with him, and he has our backs. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And um, when it comes time to vote. That's how we get the NRC changed. And um, if we can have free and fair elections, maybe we can make some head roll, head roll there. But, um, you know, Ryan, I've, like I said, I've met with him. We've had, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's daylight at the end of the tunnel for me uh, if he can get elected. So. Well, my, it's my, it, we got uh, next month. We've got our primaries. Our primaries are next month. So August two or August four, I can't remember. Yeah, everybody get out and vote. So uh, yeah, it's, sure. it's it's our our privilege and right to get out and vote. So, all right, guys and gals, uh, we're running along here yeah, on the yeah, show tonight. But, uh, that, that, that means we were, had some good discussion tonight. I tell you what, folks, if you have listened to the show, you want some more information, go on over to packermax.com check out what he's got over there in packermax's uh seeds uh he's got a whole bunch more in the store if you don't see it give lincoln a, a call over there at the shop he's there pretty much every day uh working um and check out the the website there at packermax.com and go from there there you go all right uh lincoln hang on with us when we get done with the show, we'll debrief for just a moment and let you go at that point. But uh, for everybody who's listening on the show tonight on the podcast, uh, if you would, make sure you go over, if you're listening on iTunes, go over give us a review over there. It helps the people who support us, like Lincoln. Uh, it also uh, helps spread the good word about us as well. And do us a favor and share the show if you would. And follow us over on social media. For those of you who are watching the show tonight here live on uh, on Facebook, or if you happen to catch our sh- refeed over on YouTube, give us a like, follow share do the same for packer Matson as well over on lincoln's page over on facebook and give them a like follow and share as well so next week next week we're going to switch over from hunting to some fishing uh zion from southern baits in yep southern baits indiana yep yep zion dunaway they'll be on and we're going to talk some youth fishing and see how their business is doing over there yeah we talked to them all back in the winter i do yep. believe so but we are we're going to catch up with them so looking forward to having those two guys on from down in southern indiana so that's going to do it for us this week make sure y'all tune in next wednesday night 7 30 same place same time and we will have the boys on from down in indiana y'all take care and have a good week this episode was brought to you by pse archery deer camp coffee buck baits jpo game call the island armory hacker max sunrise archery and C3 Better the Hunt technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.